I've got some awesome news for you, fellas. So we've just released our own game called Garage 54, which precisely corresponds with our own story. You can go ahead and log on and start with a modest garage, begin producing some small-scale vids, work on a few humble cars, and gradually build your way up from there. Grow just like we did back in the day. Hire a camera crew and some mechanics, move into a new garage, buy yourself some new equipment, edit some videos, grow a huge fan base. Get around to doing a few serious project cars, which you can then proceed to enter into races with other players. So yeah, basically the game is a reflection of our own journey. You can download the game for both iOS and Android devices. You'll find all the links in the video description. So go ahead and have a look, download the game, install it onto your phone, and have a ball. Hey there, fellows. So today you guys are in for one super exciting and captivating video. Yeah, this one's gonna be fun. Anyway, so here's what happened. I remember somebody sending us a video a few months back where this dude was replacing his piston return springs, which are apparently meant to increase your horsepower. And so now we're curious to see if that's really a thing. I mean, does it even work or not? In all honesty, we had to rummage through like half the internet in order to find a set of springs. They aren't a domestic product. They actually manufacture them overseas. Plus, they have to be specially tailored to your specific motor. Anyway, so a good three months went by and here they are. They finally made it. We ordered them specifically for this car. Here's something I actually didn't see. Check out what's written on the box. Turns out they make them for diesel engines as well. I didn't know that. But well, we've got a gasoline-powered Lada and four springs which... See the writing on the box? That tells us we should see a multiple times power boost in this car, with a commensurate improvement in acceleration. Anyway, I'm looking to take these here springs, open up the engine on this here car, place them inside, assemble that engine and see what happens. Let's do this. Let's have a look at what they include in the set. What exactly are we dealing with here? They've sealed it up so you can barely even open it. Alright, so immediately you've got... Those instructions are definitely not for us. We can install them without using the instructions, right? Let go of that. They've packed it in there tight. Is that it? It is from the looks of it. All I see in there is an oil stain. Okay, so what exactly have we got in here? Some instructions. A set of four springs. The car is running a four-banger, meaning we install one spring per each cylinder. For them horsepower gains, we'll start by removing the cylinder head, then we install these springs. It's all rather simple. Then we get the cylinder head back on, attach the timing belt, fire up the engine and see how she do. Let's do this. Piston return springs, good for 30 horsepower. Do they actually work? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. We've undone all of the plumbing, and now we just have to carefully pluck the head out. Very nice. Okay, so we should immediately show this head gasket. Which way is out? Alright, so we've cleaned the block before installing that new head gasket. It's all good, but the thing is that I've taken a look at the instructions, even though I promised I wouldn't. And here's the takeaway from the instructions. See this spring right here? It's slightly tapered, meaning it's wider on one end than on the other. Anyway, so the narrow end is what goes onto the piston. We need to carefully place them like so, and that's your install. We take all four of them and just put them in. Take one out, place it in, and one more. There we are. Nice. Fantastic. Now we throw on a head gasket and top it off with a cylinder head. And now it's all back together, we just need to tighten everything up, assemble the timing mechanism, do up the plumbing, and we're ready to start this thing. There it is, 
We've put everything back together, and we are looking good. Now we just need to do a bit of testing. Shutting the trunk lid. On to the testing phase. Time to fire it up. But the thing is... Oh wow, listen to it purr. Nice and smooth. It used to run pretty rough. It was barely even running in the first place. So far everything is fine. Operation is very much adequate and smooth. Just like you'd expect. Then again, I do hear... a bit of weirdness going on. But this is an older engine. Let's give it some beans. Oh, wow, it hauls! Such a beast, whoa! No detonation, no nothing, eh? Everything is excellent! I don't think anybody diluted that old gas with some fresh fuel. Still, though, it tears it up. Oh, wow, this is awesome! There you go! So, after waiting for a few months, we placed an order, worked out the details, got them ordered up, waited for delivery, and now they're here. And they are pretty amazing. Look here. Now it's time for us to roll into the shed and draw some conclusions as to how all of this works. Can you help me out? There we are. How is our test pilot doing? I'm great. This seems to be a pretty minor upgrade. You just need to remove the head, throw the springs in and put the head back on, assemble the engine, and you're looking at a fantastic result. The car tears ass, it runs. You can feel that it's all really good. Right, fellas, all jokes aside, let's have a serious discussion about these piston return springs, which we've decided to label power on. Add on a bit of power, grunt, energy, and whatever else. But in reality, here's the car, and here are those springs. <laughs> Certainly you guys didn't believe that we can actually stick them in, have the engine run smoothly and see an increase in power, did you? I'm sure you're all well aware that any sort of parts that shouldn't be inside the combustion chambers, their mere presence will always lead to the same result. Namely a severe racket. That's just the way these things go. All of those experiments where we threw some nuts and washers in, they always ended with some nasty knocking. But if you were to put something like this inside, well, take a while to guess what'll happen. That would quite obviously destroy the engine, and very quickly at that. And it's all in the fact that the piston moves all the way to the edge of the engine block. Right? There's not enough room to put a spring this large inside. Another consideration is the fact that the cylinder head contains valves. And which way do they open? Down. They move towards the piston. Even if they don't meet with each other, I mean, this sort of spring is more than enough to bend those valves. Plus, the piston isn't making it all the way up, due to the spring occupying a certain amount of space when fully compressed. So yeah, it'd be a complete mess. The piston, the valves, the spark plug, anything can take a hit in there. And in order to find out what'll really happen inside, I suggest we see firsthand. We've actually got another car which was subject to a bunch of our experiments. Last time it was feeling very sick indeed, but there's still the off chance that it might start. Yes. Okay, so the lower diameter, I mean the narrow part goes down. I'm in the process of getting them mounted, there they are. Now we put the box away, and yeah, we're ready for action. Вот, 
We've got them in there, those power springs. They're all inside now. And so now? Let's try using the starter motor, I guess. Let's try it out and look on. Wait a minute, I can see sparks flying. That's it. Looks like we're done. Stop before you kill the starter. We didn't reinstall the valve cover so that we can see the camshaft rotating. But it's stuck in place. And all because the springs have lodged themselves between the pistons and the cylinder head itself. We absolutely need to fire this engine up. But if this isn't going to work, we'll go ahead and... Uh, Attach a rope and just drag it around with nothing held back until something happens. If it starts, well, that'll be a miracle indeed. But if not, what did you say? You'll go light a candle in church if it actually starts. Oh, you'll just go to church. Yeah, maybe sending you to church is the way to go. Right, let's grab a rope, attach it and head out. Okay, we are ready. Now we see what comes out of this. Want me to go wide open throttle or take it easy? Let's take it slowly. Wide open throttle. Listen to him throwing out those big words. Why isn't anything happening? Son of a bitch. Maybe slow down and try fourth? Wait, let me try second first. Let me try... Awesome. That's reverse. Proceed gently. It did move a bit. And now I can't engage reverse. Hang on. What's wrong? We're good to go. A bit faster. A tad faster, please. Whoa, that's too much, dude. You'll get us killed. Nope. We almost got there. Yeah, we almost got it to turn over. Even dragging the car on a rope wasn't enough to convince the engine to start. Two of the pistons get jammed and that's a wrap. If we were to load one and a half tons in the back and install some wide-ass rubber, while using something powerful for towing, well, we definitely would have broken something. But here that wasn't the case. Perhaps that's a good thing, I don't know. And that does it for this comedy special. They say there's a bit of reality behind any joke. But this has to be the exception to that rule. Don't believe it if you see it. In all seriousness, this is pretty useless. Unless laughter is what you're after. I mean, an engine is an engine, and if it had made sense to the engineers, they'd have put these springs in there from the very beginning. And that's all I have for you fellows. Watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later. And now we have to tear the engine apart again to extract those damn springs. Okay.